It's that time of year again, when those nasty, noxious weeds show their ugly heads around these parts. These weeds pose a threat to our natural and agricultural areas, but if we pull together, we can prevent them from spreading. Now, if you're not sure what to look for, Marion County has developed their top 10 noxious weeds list, and I'm here to tell you about it. In fact, I'll show you each one so you can take aim at these outlaw weeds. While each one is a little different, one thing they all have in common is that they compete with beneficial species and have the potential to alter our natural landscapes and agricultural areas. At the end of the video, I'll share how you can take action. First up is false brome. Its blades are quite wide. The edges of the blades and the lower portions of the stems are noticeably hairy and overall, the plant is rather lax and droopy. It's an increasing fire danger and depletes forage and habitat areas for wildlife. Next is the Japanese and giant knotweed, which is mostly found on stream banks, moist places, roadsides, and neglected gardens. The Japanese leaf size is between four and six inches, while the giant has leaves between 10 and 12 inches. They produce small white green flowers in clusters that droop from the leaf. The stems are red brown, stout, hollow, and swollen at the nodes like bamboo. These weeds reduce biodiversity as well as clog small waterways. Third on the list is meadow and spotted knapweed, found on roadsides near overgrazed pasture. It's a stout plant, one to five feet tall, and its leaves are up to six inches long. They are narrow, coarsely lobed, and tapering off towards the top. It also produces one to three pink to purple flowers at the branch ends with black triangular spots on its bracts. These weeds can reduce forage for wildlife and livestock, as well as cause problems for tree growers. Fourth on the list is the milk thistle, which can be up to six feet tall. It has distinctive white marbling on its leaves and spines, as well as on leaf edges and the branch stems. There is a single large pink and purple flower on each stem. The nitrate in the weed can poison cattle and sheep. Number five on our list is the puncture vine. It has a low growing mat forming plant with small leaflets and small yellow flowers. It also has hard spiny burrs, which develop after flowering. It is found by disturbed sites, especially roadsides and agricultural fields. It contaminates bean and pea crops, assaults bike tires, shoe soles, animal feet, and mouths. Sixth on our list is purple loosestrife, which is found along creeks, rivers, and wetland areas. It has a square stem and is often quite hairy with magenta flower spikes, which show throughout summer. It reduces forage for wildlife and threatens habitats for waterfowl. And number seven is tansy ragwort, which is no stranger to the county. It is a biennial or perennial with numerous branches. It has bright yellow daisy-like flowers in clusters at the top with irregularly lobed leaves and a taproot. It is found in fields, pastures, and along roadsides. It's dangerous because it can poison livestock. Number eight on our list is the yellow flag iris. It has long, flat leaves like other irises and can climb up to four feet tall with bright yellow flowers. It is often located along roadside ditches, slower moving creeks, and landscapes. It takes over aquatic habitats, blocking and even partially damming waterways. Number nine is yellow toad flax. It can grow up to three feet tall and has bright yellow snapdragon-like flowers with an orange spot on their lower lip. They are often found in fields, overgrazed pastures, waste areas, and roadsides. They're sometimes sold as ornamentals, but be sure to avoid these weeds. And finally, number 10, the garlic mustard. It's neither garlic nor mustard, but a problem to be stopped. It can grow up to three feet with scalloped kidney-shaped leaves. It has a single flower stalk with multiple four-petaled flowers at the top and has a garlic odor when its leaves are crushed. 
It has not made it to Marion County yet, but it is feared that they are on their way. They are found along trails, in recreation areas, and in forest understories. They are unique because they can self-pollinate, making it difficult to stop. So there you go, the top 10 noxious weeds of Marion County. Keep your eyes open for these outlaws and report when you see them. Visit Marion County's website for more details and for the link to the Oregon Invasives hotline where you can report those pesky weeds. Thanks for pulling together to stop noxious weeds.